How many of you have made a flipbook before? Maybe something like this, with a stack of post-it notes and a little stick man running across the bottom. Yeah? <laughs> if you've done this, then you already have a pretty good basis for how animation works. But I'm sure some of you are wondering, how does something like this turn into something like this? Believe it or not, a big part of it has to do with having a good balance between art and technology. I'm currently a technical director at Walt Disney Animation Studios, and I have one of those jobs that's hard to describe to people. I'm frequently asked, but what do you actually do? And my short answer to that would be that technical directors write code to build tools and software for artists to use as they create characters, worlds, and stories that come together as an animated movie. As artistic as animated films are, it takes a lot of technology to create what you see on the big screen, and technical directors help bridge that gap. It's still not totally clear what I do, though, right? <laughs> so if I had the time and the willing attention of an audience, then I would try to explain further, and I'd say that many people get intimidated by the word code. But all code really is is a list of instructions for a computer to follow. So just like how code is used when you click to create a new email, or when you change the color on a PowerPoint slide, code is used in a variety of ways to accomplish a variety of tasks in the creation of animation. So for example, code is used to change the expressions on a character's face, a character like Moana. Code is used to simulate the motion and the movement of cloth to make it look realistic. And code is even run to grow fur to the perfect length and density on a koala. Part of the job of being a technical director is doing a lot of this code writing so that artists can focus on their craft. The other big part of the job is building and maintaining this system of collaboration at the studio. An animated movie is essentially a giant art project that many people contribute to. So a technical director helps answer questions like, how do I, a modeler, work on a character at the same time as you, an animator, without either of us losing our work? The job involves a lot of problem solving and head scratching. It's different every day, but it's essential to the creation of the final film. I remember in the first few months of starting the job, I was baffled at how an animator who had been working at the studio for 20 plus years was coming to me for help on his scene. In his scene, he was animating a sloth rolling onto the ground, but when he rendered it out, the sloth was rolling up into the air. Now I thought, surely this animator already knows everything there is to know about animation, so why would he be coming to me for help? But then I soon realized that for an animated movie to be successfully created, it needed three things. There needed to be incredible artistic storytelling talent. There needed to be the brilliant minds of mathematicians, physicists, and engineers. But there also needed to be people who could work and translate between the two worlds, the world of art and the world of technology. And I happened to be someone who could speak both of those languages. Now, it took me a while to get to this point, and frankly, I'm still learning a lot about both, but out of these two, art came to me first. Looking back, I can almost pinpoint the moment that my mindset shifted with respect to art. Growing up, I was imaginative and creative, but I wouldn't have always considered myself artsy. It wasn't until the accidental enrollment in the high school art class that I realized art didn't have to be high stakes and perfect, but rather art could be playful and messy and experimental. And that's why I loved it. Because art was all about creating something meaningful and putting it out into the world. Um, and because of that art class, I started seeing myself as an artist. Maybe not an expert, but I was able to experiment with sketching and graphic design and stop motion animation, and I loved all of it. The language of technology, however, didn't come to me quite as naturally. Uh, in college, I majored in computer science engineering, less so because it fully aligned with my passions, but rather because it was this giant question mark and I was intrigued. I was seeing the power and influence that technology was having on our lives, and I wanted to understand that better. 
So while I enjoyed the way my computer science classes challenged me to think, I didn't always feel like I belonged in that space. I found myself constantly taking courses outside of my major to fulfill this itching need to be creative. I took screenwriting, graphic design, live performance, philosophy, and uh, I, I saw myself at the time taking those non-engineering courses as just me looking for an escape. And oftentimes I'd question if I'd made a wrong turn on the pathway to a successful career, because the only end result that I saw for someone with a computer science degree was to become a software engineer at a Microsoft or a Google or a Facebook type of company. And that didn't always sit right with me. It wasn't until well into my first job out of college as a software engineer that I brought these doubts and hesitations up with my manager. I had told him that I was struggling to grasp some of the more abstract concepts of the job, that I wasn't getting to interact with people and to be creative, and that I was having a hard time seeing the positive impacts of my work and ultimately why it mattered. Now, I was really lucky to have the manager that I did because he made it clear to me that his job was to help me build the career and the life that I wanted, whether that was at that company or somewhere else. I remember looking at him, at this person in front of me, so obviously on my side, looking at the great company I was at and the great job that I had, and while I was grateful for all of it, I couldn't help but feel guilty, and I kept asking myself, isn't it selfish to want anything more? And in the moments that I had thought I'd chosen the wrong career, my manager helped me realize that a career in technology can come in different flavors. Some software engineers like to dig deep into code to solve a problem. Some like to interact with people and to design the user experience. And then he'd say to me, and some, like us, we like a little bit of each. We like combining our interests to see the big picture and dive into how that makes people think, act, and feel. You don't have to pick just one. When I heard that, it blew my mind because I had thought, like maybe some of you, that, oh, I can't be this because I am that. I can't be an artist or an athlete or a cook because I am an engineer or I studied accounting or I'm already too far down this career path, right? And up until that point, I'd seen my interest in art and my curiosity for technology as two separate bubbles. One was how I interacted and expressed my thoughts and experiences, while the other was, would be my avenue to what I hoped to be an impactful career. But now hearing that you don't have to pick just one, I became set on finding the intersection between the two. When I went to my parents with this half-baked career conclusion, I expected us to look to the future for answers, but instead they helped me look to my past and they, uh, we happened to find this home video. <laughs> this home video. <laughs> I'm three years old here, and my dad and I are acting out, oops, or my dad and I are acting out made-up stories in our living room while my mom films us. This became one of my favorite home videos because I could see the little story lover part of me starting to grow. I'm three years old, unable to read or write, but I've already been sucked into the power and excitement of storytelling. And as I've grown up, that same love of stories that that little girl has has always stayed with me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, looked, I, I took a step back and I, I looked at this, this core part of me that I'd forgotten about, and I thought to myself, huh, this is it. Uh, when you combine art and technology with stories, it creates something really powerful. And storytelling does exactly that. It combines art and technology. And so this was my aha moment, and I, I didn't quite know how this would impact my career or my life, but seeing these pieces together just felt right. And I knew that if I kept my eyes and ears open, I'd find the opportunity that I was looking for. So a few years ago, 
I was attending a virtual tech conference where I happened to stumble into the last five minutes of a Disney animation coffee chat. I logged on to Zoom just as the recruiter was asking for final questions. And if I had logged on just two minutes later, I would have missed it when someone asked, do opportunities exist for someone to work in animation with a background in technology? And sure enough, there was a role, and it was the role of a technical director, one that I'd never heard of before. Now, this concept of pulling together different pieces of your life to create something new is by no means applicable to only my life. It's happening all around us all the time. I have a friend who majored in mechanical engineering. It wasn't really his thing, but he had a passion for clean energy and a knack for entrepreneurship. And he went on to have his aha moment and co-founded an electric bike company. I have another friend. She studied history, has a love of performance, and wanted to bring a new voice to education. And she went on to become NPR's youngest education desk reporter. And then I have two friends from college, both love to cook, have backgrounds in psychology, environmental, and social impact. And they went on to have their aha moment and created a food startup, creating plant-based meats out of organic vegetables, like beet jerky. Now, these are just a few of the examples of ways people pull together passions with interests, with skills, to create a meaningful career and a meaningful life to them. It's happening all around us all the time. Now, I want to leave you all with a challenge. And it's a challenge that comes in three parts. Part one, I challenge you to list out the three, four, ten languages that you speak whether it's the language of music, or sustainability, or photography, or theme parks. What gets you excited or makes you scratch your head? Take ownership of those languages and hold them close. Part two, go out and talk about them. Talk with a friend or a coworker or a stranger on the street and tell them about these pieces of your life, the hopes, the dreams, the fears. Take all of it and throw it out into the universe because you never know what might come circling back in return. You never know what you might find in the last five minutes of a Zoom call. And part three, my favorite. Give yourself permission to be excited. These parts of your life should be exciting. And honestly, it's just more fun to live life this way. We're all out here just trying to figure it out. So why not pull from what you know, pull from what you love, and pull from who you are, and remember that there exists a bridge between them all. You don't have to pick just one. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>